higher income does not mean you should increase your lifestyle. Higher income should not excuse you from the fact that you need to fund your dreams first. Am I actually earning more than what I actually need? Because if this comes out negative, that means you definitely can't quit your job. Hey guys, so in this video, let's talk about what are the steps that you can make right now if you see yourself being your own boss or if you see yourself not being employed or if you see yourself fully just being invested and using that as your source of cash flow. So I want to talk about how much do you need so that you can actually quit your job. I'm sure a lot of you know that I graduated engineering, Mapua, 2005, electronics and communications engineering. Then the following year, I took the board exam and 2005, November graduation, April 2006, board exam. In between, you didn't have school anymore and you're just reviewing. So, nakaya na rin humingi ng pera sa magulang at that time. And in the same way, your allowances, I don't, I can't remember if I had allowance at that time, but I knew, of course, I had money for food. April 2005, the board results came a few days after. Then, I signed my first job. May 2006, I started June 2006. As you all know, I graduated as an engineer but went into IT consultancy. And that was my job for five years. I went to two companies. My last company was with Hewlett Packard where I was a SAP basis administrator for those who are in SAP. You know how lucrative SAP is, how promising that industry was. So please do note that that was 2005, 2006. There weren't a lot of SAP basis engineers yet at that particular time. I quit my job five, six years after, around 2010, 2011. And it took me also a period of time to be able to do it. So please do note this. If you're watching this and you feel you want to quit your job, please remember you don't have to do it tomorrow. It also has to be a process. The reason why I say this is because if you see yourself as an entrepreneur, well and good but don't quit your job today just because you get inspired i've seen so many people say that they want to be entrepreneurs they quit their job the business does not do well they get demoralized they go back to being an employee demotivated and sad and i don't want that to happen to you it's okay to be an entrepreneur it's okay to be an employee but it has to be at the right season it has to be at a season in your life also where you know also that you are ready people always glamorize entrepreneurship that it's the best way to go but if you see yourself as an employee you like the routine you like the nine to five then it's not wrong to work as an employee we all are different and as much as we want everyone to be investors and entrepreneurs not everyone will be i really want to do things at my own terms i want to wake up when i want i also want to actually explore the things that I really want to do and I don't want to be confined by this number of hours. Don't get me wrong, huh? people always think that when you're not an employee, you will work less. That's not true. When you are not an employee, you will actually work more, especially if you are doing the things that you like, especially if you're doing the things that you love, it will cause you to grind more because you are so passionate about it because you will go beyond what's normal. You will go beyond what's average. Here are three things that you need to consider before you quit your job. Number one, your lifestyle, meaning how much do you spend not on a weekly or monthly basis, but how much do you spend on a yearly basis? And this gives people who are younger a larger advantage than people who are older. Why? Because if you're older, the amount of money that you spend per year will be bigger, especially if you're paying off debt for a house, for a car, especially if you have kids that you're sending off to school and then they have some medical bills or especially also if you're smack in the middle the sandwich generation meaning you are supporting your parents and in the same way you already have kids on your own and you're also supporting your own personal needs so the more responsibilities you are as you get older the harder it will also be for you that's why if you're watching this and you are in your mid-20s where your ability to earn is faster already than when you are starting out and then you don't have a lot of responsibilities yet don't increase your lifestyle Higher income does not mean you should increase your lifestyle. Higher income should not excuse you from the fact that you need to fund your dreams first. You need to know your lifestyle in a year. What is an amount of money that you spend on a yearly basis for you to operate normally? And the word normally is subjective. We'll drill more about that later. But it's so important that you need to know the exact number of what you will need on a yearly basis. So that could be 120,000, meaning 10,000 a month, which is <laughs> baka parang bitin na yon in today's standard, depending 
everything also on san ka nakatira. Of course, if you're living in a city, mas mataas yung cost of living doon versus if you're living, say, a province far from the main city. So, food is cheaper, rent is cheaper, you probably have your own land also there, etc. So, you need to figure that out. So, it could be a million in a year, it could be two million in a year, it could be ten million in a year, but you have to write that down. So, number one, your lifestyle. Number two, your cash flow. How much is coming in right now? How much also will come in later on when you quit your job? So you need to know what's coming in. And that's why I've been a very, very big fan of multiple streams of income because when one dries up, you have others that will fill in the gap for you. So you need to write it down. So for example, you have rental income, write that down. You have employment income, you're earning say 50,000 a month, 70,000 a month, 120,000 a month, 20,000 a month. You write that down and then you annualize it. How much are you earning per year? So dun palang you will have a realization point already. Meaning, am I actually earning more than what I actually need? Because if this comes out negative, that means you definitely can't quit your job. That means you actually have to earn more or that actually means also you need to trim down on your lifestyle. That means if sobrang lakas mo uminom ng kape sa labas, tapos mas madami pala yung gastos mo dun sa kinikita mo, then maybe it's time to trim that down as well. Maybe it's time to lessen that as well. So your lifestyle, your cash flow, and the most important and what we've been hammering in this channel over and over, your savings. How long would you last before your cash flow would dry up? Meaning, if just in case all of your sources of income go to zero, just in case nothing comes in, just in case magsara yung kumpanya kung saan ka nagtatrabaho or the business that you start does not really do well or if you're freelance, you lose all of your clients, how long will you last if that goes to zero? You actually need to compute that. So those are the three important things. Your lifestyle, what you're spending, your cash flow, what's coming in, then your level of savings. I mentioned earlier that Part of your lifestyle is an amount of money that you need to spend per year. There's two categories there and depending on who you are and what you want, no, there's no right or wrong for this. One is basic lifestyle. Number two is your normal lifestyle. Meaning when I say basic lifestyle, maybe some of the things that are considered luxuries are not there. So let me give you an example. Luxuries are things that you can live without. For example, Netflix. So that shouldn't be part of your basic. Or for example, eating out on a regular basis. So you can make a computation. How much is your basic lifestyle? How much is a normal lifestyle for you? Meaning eating out or in today's new normal, lagi ka nagpapagrab, lagi ka nagpapa food panda. It really will depend on your lifestyle. If you will choose a basic lifestyle, that's easier for you to save up on. In terms of cash flow on a yearly basis, mas madali siyang mapalitan because mas mababa, mas basic eh. In essence also, for a savings buffer, it's easy for you to be able to save that amount because it's more basic. If you go with the more basic one, it's easier for you, in my opinion, to be able to quit your job. It will be easier for you to save up that amount of money and it will be easier for you to get an amount of cash flow that will commensurate to it. Then what you can do also is to challenge yourself that if you earn more than the basic or you get more than the basic, you save more than the basic, that's when you start buying your luxuries. Pero yung maganda doon is you've covered your bases already that if things go bad, you can just revert to this basic budget. Normal lifestyle is basically your needs plus your wants. In my opinion, what's more sustainable though is creating a normal type of budget for your lifestyle. Meaning your needs are covered, but also you don't feel deprived so that every time you work hard and then you're enjoying some of the stuff also that are the fruits of you working hard. It makes the journey also more fun, I think, because it's not just you earning more, but right at that very moment, you are also reaping the benefits of it. Alam mo yun, the fruits of your labor is something that you can actually feel while either you're employed or you are out of employment already. And it can also be progressive, pwede magbago yan. Meaning when I was starting out, I was okay with a basic lifestyle. As I started to get older, savings got better, investments got better. It sort of transitioned also that yung lifestyle also covered the wants and the luxuries and some of the things that are uh, medyo umaarte na sa buhay. So, so that could be part of it. So next, I mentioned something about cash flow. So this could be when you quit your job. This could be coming from business. This could be coming from freelance ventures. Or this could be coming also from investment. So people have this misconception that when you quit your job, you're retired already. But if you notice it, if what you do when you quit your job is either freelance or business, that will require still a lot of work. I guess the option lang is and the advantage is if you quit your job for something that you like to do, 
then you feel that you are building on something. You feel that you're pursuing something that's part of your calling, part of your passion, part of your purpose. If your job is something that you're just doing as a means for you to be responsible, there's nothing wrong with that. But I don't think it's something that you will do and can do for 40 years. So a tip for you to be able to figure out also what's a good business and what's a good freelance work is to see yourself 30 years, 40 years down the line and to ask yourself, is this something that I see myself doing even when I'm 50, 60, 70? If the answer to that right now is yes, then maybe that's something that you should actually start. Or another question that you could ask yourself is this, if I had a billion pesos, will I still do this? Because if the answer to that is yes, then probably that business or that freelance work is something that's a very, very good idea. Earning more money should not be your primary motivation. Earning more is just a byproduct of what you do. And let me share to you everything that I do right now, investing in cryptos, investing in stocks, investing in bonds, even recording this YouTube video, uh, being invited for keynote talks, writing books, writing columns for newspapers, starting some of the businesses that are fun for me. Even if I had 20 billion pesos tomorrow, I'll still do all of these things. Even if I had 20 billion pesos tomorrow, I'll still make a YouTube video every day. Why? Because I like it. Having more, having the cash flow, having extra does not mean you won't work it. It just means that you get to work on things that you love to do. It just means that you have the option that you get to pick the ones that you want versus the ones that you actually don't want. So you need to figure out what your cash flow is, regardless if it's investments, business, or from freelance work. When do you know it's time for you to quit? First, let's look at your savings. The time for you to quit is when you feel that you have enough savings to cover you should you run out of money. Remember what I said earlier, compute for what your lifestyle is for a year. So for example, you computed, okay, I need a million pesos for a year. What's a level of savings that if nothing comes in, you need a million a year, how many years will you last? Now, this is the boring part of it because not a lot of people want to save money, but it will give you the comfort. Eh? It will give you the protection also when things don't go well. There's also a possibility that some of your businesses will fail. Eh? No matter how safe it looks, no matter if, for example, think about it. Real estate is a very, very safe investment. But what if seven years down the line, walang magrent sa yo for eight months? Walang magrent sa yo for 14 months? I'm just throwing out some ideas here because if you don't prepare for that and you don't have that cash buffer, you'll be hit. That's what I'm saying. What if you invest in corporate bonds and then suddenly you default your company kung saan ka invest Looking at it from 2021, they, they look like a safe company, but something happens in 2024 that fundamentally changes their business and then they default on it. That's what I'm saying. No matter where you're getting your source of income, regardless if it's freelance, regardless if it's a business that you're starting, or if it's an investment, what is a safe amount of buffer for you that kung mawala lahat yun, you will still be okay? But not just okay, but you will have enough time, enough wiggle room in order to figure things out. So that's very, very relative. And what I say here, uh, this is above and beyond your emergency fund. This is also above and beyond your health fund, etc. My suggestion is, at the very least, one year worth of your lifestyle uh, up to you Nayod, if it's your basic lifestyle or your normal lifestyle, but at least save up one year of it. Please take note of that because this will protect you. This will save you, especially when you quit your job, you're on your own. No health benefits, no health insurance, no boss, no fixed amount of salary that will come in on a regular basis. Should you go for one year? Of course, if getting more than one year will give you that peace of mind, go for it. I'll say this over and over. No amount of money is worth losing sleep over. No amount of money is worth losing peace of mind over. So if you feel you need three years, okay lang. The, the cons lang of getting more than a year is you will have to save a larger amount of money. Then it also means that it will take longer actually for you to transition out. Or what you can do is this. Start with one year, quit. Then as you start to earn more from that business, freelance job, etc., then you add on to it. Pwede rin yun. Second, aside from looking at your savings, it's looking at your cash flow. You need to have a healthy cash flow coming from your sources of income, meaning you need to look at the history of how money has been coming in your way that's not related to employment. It's easy to get excited when you get one month, boom, that will take care of 10 months. However, what if that one month that will take care of 10 months of your expenses only happens once? So it's so important that you need historical data to actually make it work. That's why for me, it took me five plus years because I actually needed to see also, aside from my savings, do I have what it takes that 
okay, if I don't have a fixed income coming my way, will I still be protected? You need to realize this. And this is one of my mistakes when I started out. There will be months that income will be so awesome. But there will be months also that it will be so bad na literally walang pumapasok. You need to know when those months are. You need to have a track record of it also so that you can already figure out that you're not overestimating yourself na yung one month na yun na sobrang taas, chamba lang yun. Or yung one month na yun dahil Pasko siguro yun, etc. Two things also for your cash flow. If it's investment related, then just check if all of those investments are enough already to take care of your lifestyle. If it's from a business, it becomes tricky because whatever you earn from the business, please make sure your biggest priority first is to make the business healthy first than your personal finances. Yung ilalagay mo lang for your own personal cash flow coming from the business is sobra na ng business that the business also should have a cash buffer. The business also should have a recurring income. Once that's established, once that's good already, that's when you start to impute yung extra na pwede mong ilagay sa sarili mo. And this is my suggestion if for those who want to be entrepreneurs, give yourself a salary on a monthly basis so that it allows your business to expand, it allows your business to grow, and then you only touch the salary that you give yourself. So in a way, so that you separate what happens to your income from business and you separate the funds also for your personal, do not mix them together. Because when you mix them, it's easy to be tempted to think that the money of the business is also yours, where it's actually not. The growth of your business is far more important because your business has the ability to scale and allow you to go to 100x. So there, very, very practical steps on what you could actually do. This is not get rich quick. This is not the sexy thing to talk about, but this is something I think that's very, very important and insightful for everyone to learn. Very important and insightful for everyone to know that at this point in your life, if you want to quit your job, know what you're spending, know what your lifestyle is, save massively, and build that cash flow. This may take years for you to build, but it's okay. Life is long. Be patient. Trust the process and work hard for it and build multiple streams of income for it. All intents and purposes, there's a reason why you're watching this. There's a reason why you're so excited about this and you're looking at this video because you already have it inside of you that one day you want to quit your job. And I salute you for it. And I'm going to make more and more videos about this because I really feel that above and beyond talking about stocks, above and beyond talking about Bitcoin, I really need people to know and get hammered down the reason on why they want to invest and the reason why you want to make your money work hard for you. And we're going to do that more and more and more. If you enjoyed this series, let me know so that I can make more videos on this. Put it in the comment section. I am learning. I am learning. Or dun sa mga matagal nang napunood dito sa channel na to, you know the drill. Comment, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go for the YouTube algorithm. So if you're new to this, my name is Marvin Germo. I'm a stock market trader and investor. And I'm also dabbling in the cryptocurrency market space right here, right now. And if you want to know more about everything that I do, links are in the description below for you to have details about it. You want to join a technical analysis class where we look at charts on how you can analyze stocks and win and trade the markets. Links are in the description below. It will be this July already. That's one. If you want to learn the stock market via reading, I have books that are available in National Bookstore, in National Bookstore and all of and all of Shopee. Links are in the description below as well. And if you want to trade US markets, check it out below. Go trade. It's invite only. You can use the token that's popping up right here. Or you can also use Binance if you want to trade the cryptocurrency market and buy those amazing altcoins with so much utility. I really am rooting for your financial success. I'm rooting for your financial freedom. I'm rooting for you to actually make it to all the 260 plus thousand subscribers in this channel. I believe in you and I wish the best for you. And I want you guys to be successful and be financially free. Because I'll say this over and over, the more you make, the more you also have the ability to make a difference in the lives of people around you. So that's it for now. This is Marvin Germo. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys. And God bless you all.